In this particular lecture, let's use a complex piece of state for our reducer. So in the previous example, we had used object as a state. Now let's make use of a complex object here. So let's take a scenario here, wherein instead of incrementing or decrementing the value of count by one, let's actually have an input field here, which determines by what value is this value actually incremented or decremented. So let's suppose we have a variable called as increment by, and that increment by variable is going to decide by what value is this count value going to be incremented or decremented. So now the question is where exactly to have that increment by value. So that increment by value has to be included in our state here. So as now we are using an object, we could go ahead and add as many number of values here. So I could add another variable here called as let's say increment by. And let's say the by default value by which we want to increment or decrement is going to be one. And we want to change this by making use of an input field. So what I would do here is that I would now go ahead and I would also create an input field here. So I'll create an input field. And the value of this input field is going to be simply this increment by value here. So in order to access this increment by value here, I simply have to say state dot increment by. If I do that, now as you can see, uh, that increment by value is added here. But now the problem is you cannot go ahead and change this value anytime soon. So in order to change this, what we have to do is we have to add an on change method here. So I would say on change. And in case of on change, in case of a use state, we used to simply go ahead, create a callback function here and then use the set value function from the use state method. But now here, as we are using a reducer, that means this time we actually have to go ahead and dispatch an object instead. So here inside the on change, I have to say E, which is the event. So we are passing an event object here to this callback. And here, just as we have dispatched an object in case of increment, I would also dispatch an object here as well. So dispatch, call the dispatch function, then pass in an object here. And this time we also have to pass in the type. And this time what we are trying to do here is that we are simply trying to go ahead and change the value of this input field here. So here for the type, uh, let's call this type as uh, let's suppose set increment because that basically sets the increment value. So I would say set increment is going to be the type of action we are performing. And then for the payload here, the payload or the value which we want to pass in for this input field is nothing but the actual value which is contained inside this input field. So in order to get access to that value, I would say payload as that's going to be e dot target dot value. But this e dot target dot value which we pass here, that needs to be converted into a number. Therefore, I have to say number and then pass in e dot target dot value. And we all know that this e dot target dot value basically gets the value from the input field which we have. So now once this is dispatched, we also need to make sure that we actually handle this action here inside this reducer. So we do exactly the same thing here. So we check if the action dot type is going to be equal equal to this particular action, which is set increment. So if this is the case, in that particular case, we simply have to return a new value of state. So here I would say return. So we basically take the existing value of state using the spread operator. And the only thing which we want to change here is the increment by value. So here I would set the increment by to the new value here, which we actually get from action dot payload. So that's going to be action dot payload. So in action dot payload, we are simply going to have the value which is passed from this particular event object, which is nothing but this input field right here. So once we are done with this, let's see if that would work. So I'll refresh. This time the warning is gone. And now I could change the value of this thing to 10 and it says 10. I could change it to 100 and we have 100 here. So that means this part of our application is done. But still, when I click on increment count, this is not incrementing the count by 100, but it's instead incrementing by one. So in order to make that change here, the only thing which we have to do here is that instead of changing the value of the count by state.count plus action.payload, 
we instead have to increment the value by this increment by state variable which we have. So here instead of action dot payload, I now have to use this value. So state dot increment by, and the same thing should be done over here as well. So state dot increment by, and that's it. Now one more thing which you could do here is that you could remove the payloads from here because obviously they do not matter. And now if you go ahead and click on increment count here, as you can see the value is being increased by this factor. So if you change it to 21, as you can see the value is being changed by that factor and same is the case with decrement as well. So this is how you could go ahead and use a complex piece of state along with use reducer to maintain state of your application. So by making use of a complex object, you could obviously go ahead and handle more variables which are required for your application. So that's all we have to learn about the reducer. We are going to learn how to use reducer with context as well in the later part of this course. But in the next lecture, I just want to cover one more simple example, which already takes into consideration the current concepts. So we'll create a simple bank account example, which will reinforce the concept of reducer in your mind in a much simpler way. So let's learn about that in the next one.